Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States of America. It wasn't all push-ups and cramming for Prague Week, though uh, to set the Guinness Book of Records, world records, most simultaneous push-ups, there had to be an enormous amount of push-ups. Beyond you, beyond, but all of you, uh, I think you had some fun along the way. Maybe a good use of your epic passes. That would be reason enough to join. This has been the President of the United States of America. May God have mercy on our souls. TV.com slash stew and sign up. Use the promo code stew to save 10 bucks. If you're watching on YouTube, like the video right now, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. We appreciate it. Rob Eno is here with the latest on CNN's meltdown. The Senate passed the debt limit bill last night. It's on its way to Biden for his signature if he can you know, find his way uh, you know, off the floor first. Uh, but we start by doing The Little Mermaid. Yes, the, there's a new version of The Little Mermaid. Have you heard? Are you excited? Do you want to see it? Why are we obsessed with mermaids? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Why the half woman, half fish thing? Why is that something that's enticing to our culture? I don't really. They're almost all love stories, too. Like, what's our obsession with having sex with fish? Uh, I don't know. It's not, it's, not, it's not my thing. If it's your thing. That's okay. We're not going to judge you for having sex with a fish. We're just curious as to why, 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 why? Mermaids, why? I don't, I don't really, I don't really understand it. You know how many mermaid movies there are? I asked my producer to give me a list. Here it is. Let me see all these mermaids. Let me give, give me a go. There's a uh, Little Mermaid, another Little Mermaid, Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea, Little Mermaid Live, Three more Little Mermaids, Little Mermaid, The Mermaid, The Mermaids, Mermaid, Mermaids, Mermaids, A Mermaid's Tale, Scales, Mermaids Are Real, Mermaid Down, <laughs> The Mermaid, Lake of the Dead, uh, Killer Mermaid, that one sounds pretty good, Mermaid Isle, Jalpari, The Desert Mermaid, which that's a real stretch. I mean, you know, I just... Doesn't seem like there'd be a lot of mermaids in the desert. I've heard the mermaids singing, the mermaids curse, mermaid in the fog, a mermaid in Paris. Is that a spinoff of the werewolf thing? Uh, a mermaid chair, the million dollar mermaid, Mr. Peabody in the mermaid, Barbie mermaidia, uh, Barbie in a mermaid tale, Barbie in a mermaid tale 2? We needed a sequel to Barbie in a mermaid tale. Barbie dolphin magic, Lady in the Water, which is somehow also a mermaid movie, Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, On Stranger Tides had mermaids in it, Night Tide, The King's Daughter, Splash. That's the one I really go back to, right? It's Splash. It feels like, I mean, there's a lot of these that are before 1984, but Splash was kind of the big one. It was like, oh, Daryl Hannah. I mean, she's pretty hot. And it's like, well, yeah, Daryl Hannah, 1984, very hot. But like, why not just be attracted to Daryl Hannah? Why, why does she have to be half fish? Why does that make it better? What, what, what's going on here with the American male? There's a real problem. I think Tom Hanks should have to answer for it. He's never addressed these questions. Why was he so attracted? Why did he say, you know what? Yes, I want to be in that movie where the whole time I'm pretty much trying to have sex with a fish. Tom Hanks won't answer that, will he? He will not. I am a little, by the way, of course, and I want to make sure you understand this. The, probably the last thing you thought, time you thought about mermaids was when Disney Plus uh, digitally edited out the butt crack of Daryl Hannah. They played censor and just said, hey, we're going to put Splash on our platform, but no Daryl Hannah butt crack. You'll be happy to know they've returned it. Yes, Disney has put the butt crack back in to, sp <laughs> to Splash. All of this <laughs> leads me to the bizarre point that we're going to today where it's just another story of you never can be woke enough. There's never a time where you achieve the woke goal. You don't get there. There's, you never arrive. There's no place to actually go. It's just a, an eternal goal that sits in the future that you never wind up living up to. Um, now, the new Little Mermaid has a black Little Mermaid. And that was, of course, done 
uh, to, I guess, please the woke gods, right? We have to show diversity, equity, inclusion. Therefore, the fact that we've already included that half of the person is a fish is not enough. We have to instead make the top half of the person have black skin and the bottom half still a fish. I don't know if they changed the type of fish the bottom half was, but this was, of course, done to please the woke gods. And uh uh-oh, there's been problems with that. After Little Mermaid remake endures harsh reviews, IMDb steps in and alters the review system for the movie. Now, IMDb, of course, gives you all these, uh, you know, cast lists and reviews, and you can go and put a review up there if you want as well. The Internet Movie Database activated an alternate weighting calculation in order to compensate for alleged unusual activity among audiences reviewing the new Little Mermaid remake. The new film has been criticized from a variety of perspectives, uh, ranging from the racial recasting, oh, it was originally a white character, actually it was originally a white character that was half white and half fish, uh, to criticism of Asian actress Aquafina's rap song, The Scuttlebutt. I mean, could you, can you imagine something worse than what I'm describing right now? And Wesley Morris is lamenting in the New York Times that the children's film lacked kink. And you might say, wait a minute, (laughs) did that actually happen? Did someone in the New York Times actually say the child's movie about people wanting to have sex with fish lacked kink? Is that because I thought the the sex with a fish thing is really you're on the kinky edges of this already. But yes, not only did it happen. The New York Times actually highlighted it and tweeted it. They say, Disney's live-action remake of The Little Mermaid with Halle Berry starring as Ariel in a diverse cast reeks of obligation and noble intentions, but joy, fun, mystery, risk, flavor, kink, they're missing. Not enough kink in the Sex with Fish storyline for Wesley Morris. Remember that? If you happen to attend a party with the guy, because, uh, man, that could be it could be really interesting. Um, now, on the rating system, the process does not appear to be transparent. The site explained to ensure our rating mechanism remains effective. We do not disclose the exact method used to generate the rating. The weighted average rating, though, made a massive difference, raising a four point seven out of ten to a seven out of ten. Now, I don't know how many sites are doing this. Rotten Tomatoes has it at sixty seven percent out of two hundred eighty two reviews. The audience score seems really positive, 95%, but we don't know if that's weighted or not. And people are complaining uh, on both sides of this. You know, people on the right are like, come on, just make the movie. It's a remake of the movie about the sex with the fish. Just make it the way that it was before. And then uh, the left is saying, well, I don't know. We don't think uh, a black little mermaid is nearly woke enough. What about the women? What about the message we're sending to little girls by this half fish creature deciding it wants to hook up with the male lead? Aren't we telling them that they should leave everything behind? Now, this sounds ridiculous, but of course it's real. And Deadline, Pennyworth star Paloma Faith slams the little mermaid Not what I want to be teaching the next-gen women. Here's what she said. As a mother of girls, I don't want my kids to think it's okay to give up your entire voice and your powers to love uh, just to love a man. Faith shared in a now-deleted Instagram post that Metro caught. WTF is this S. Not what I want to be teaching next-gen women at all. I I don't want to be teaching them either uh, this. uh, You know, you'd think maybe the answer should be Maybe we shouldn't be treating next generation men to try to hook up with fish, you know, but but we have to overlook that situation and go the other way. And it wasn't just about men and women getting together. It wasn't just about the lack of kink. That was the problem here with the Little Mermaid. It wasn't even the fact that the Little Mermaid transformed the white mermaid into a black mermaid for woke purposes. You should know that even when you make choices like that, everything is racist. Everything is racist. Every thought you have is a KKK dream. Everything is racist. White supremacist extreme. Yes, everything is racist. And here is seriously where the left is going after this movie. The Little Mermaid and Disney Dilemma. Why no black prince? Now we have, we've converted the race of the actual mermaid into a black person or a black mermaid, half man, half woman, half fish. Uh, We've done that already, but that's never enough because you're never 
woke enough for this crowd. Here's what Salon says, because I don't think it's strange to question why the first black Ariel had a European white father. Her aunt Ursula is white and sets in her sights on a white prince. What is the point of having a black little mermaid if she's just going to be thrown into the center of a white world? Ariel could not even save a black dude from the shipwreck because everyone on Prince Eric's boat is white. She doesn't even have a black option. <laughs> What is Disney trying to say? They're trying to make money is what they're trying to do. And I love how the fact that they didn't put enough black people in the middle of a shipwreck is now anti-black. I, I would, I, you want white people in the shipwreck that are all going to the bottom of the sea. At least that's the tone of the coverage. You'd want them all to die at the bottom of the sea. You certainly don't want black people to be dying at the bottom of the sea, right? But no, because... Uh, I guess uh, the mermaid's dad was white. Like, there's no, and this, there's no, maybe she was adopted. Maybe they went, you know, because it would be very difficult to create a half person, half fish naturally. I think you'd need to adopt in that particular situation. And I'll say this, uh, Prince, what is his name? Prince Eric? I mean, if, I'm just doing the math here. If your kid's a mermaid, seems like you hooked up with a full fish. Okay, you went, went, went on one. Man and fish, there was some late night thing that went on, maybe a yacht trip, uh, got a little frisky, caught a fish, something happened there, mermaid's the result. That's what I'm thinking here. So really, I don't know how, I'm just saying this is a bad, this is a, how is this a children's movie? How are we explaining this to kids? Do we really need more mermaid movies? I think not, but that wasn't the, the end of the racism claims against the Little Mermaid. No, no. You have this uh, from the wonderful blog Black on White TV because we just will not have a racial conversation in this country. We simply will not discuss issues of race under any circumstances except every circumstance. We will never say anything about race except all the things that we say on a daily basis. We never will talk about it except that it dominates all of our thoughts all of the time. That's why we need black on white TV. The headline, Disney's The Little Mermaid, Caribbean slavery and telling the truth to children. Why won't we tell the truth to children? I don't know. Just got to point this out, that it's a story about a half fish, half person. So maybe truth isn't exactly the top priority of the children's movie. But uh, let's get into the, uh, get into the actual uh, points here. The Little Mermaid criticized by prominent diversity advocate, which apparently is a job these days, for its dangerous erasure of slavery. Marcus Ryder, an influential British campaigner who also chairs the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, which apparently is also a job, celebrated the casting of Halle Berry but took issue with the film's glossy depiction of racial harmony. Can you imagine depicting uh, an Id idyllic future in which black and white people get together and get along? And so do have fish people. Um, after watching the Disney remake with his six-year-old son, Ryder felt compelled to write a blog about the movie, which he said missed an opportunity to gently educate children. Ryder said The Little Mermaid appears to be set in the 18th century. <laughs> you believe people are putting this much time. 18th century at a time of African, what is it? African slavery. But the fictional Caribbean islanders chose to Atlantica live in a free world from human rights Atrocities. I don't even, half of that I don't even makes, doesn't make any sense. I do not think we do our children any favors by pretending that slavery didn't exist, but we do them lots of favors by pretending that half fish people exist. That, those, that's totally fine to pretend. You can't say, hey, here's an idyllic land in which we don't talk about the worst things humans have ever done to each other. Instead, let's just have a, a fish world that describes all of the tragic events from human history. Brilliant. Um, Disney's Little Mermaid, Caribbean Slavery and uh, Telling the Truth to Children was the title. Setting the fantastical story in this time and place is literally the equivalent of setting a love story between Jew and Gentile in 1940s Germany and ignoring the Jewish Holocaust. Good God, man. Seriously? You're going to bring the Holocaust into this? You know, I would also say that probably 
the mass slaughter of Jews not exactly the right setting for a mermaid flick. I would say if they said it in 1940s uh, on the shores of Europe, maybe people being executed uh, in war and you know, bloody bodies washing up on the shores, maybe not the right backdrop. Uh, this is a children's movie. It's supposed to make children happy. You're not going to discuss the worst things that ev- humans have ever done to other humans. You're not going to bring in Jeffrey Dahmer and him carving up Laotian children in the middle of a t- kid's movie either. That just seems to be, to be basic human knowledge to avoid those things. Ryder acknowledged that the, lemon, uh, the Little Mermaid is fantasy. Good. And the story does not need to be assiduously faithful to history. But he argued that children are not well served by overlooking the past. He said that Disney could have set the film in Haiti after it had overthrown the shackles of slavery with Ariel meeting her prince against the backdrop of a burgeoning racial harmony. And, you know, look, the Haiti situation, what a wonderful triumph of human history. Yeah, there are some good things, and I'm glad some of them happened. Hasn't worked out all that well for Haiti, has it? I mean, really, at the end of the day, uh, not exactly a thriving uh, country. At this point, they've had their share of problems. I think we could point out maybe even in the uprising of uh, racial harmony in Haiti that there were still a lot of negatives. Should we focus on all of those too? Should we go into all the negative things that have happened in Haiti over the years? I don't know. It's a kid's movie, dude. Just relax. Let, 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 let the kids go and enjoy their little swimming fish thing and have them apparently groom them to grow up to fantasize about sex with fish. That's what we're all here to do, right? I mean, come on, we can all get along on that point. I will say that you can go through so much of this and question the insanity of our times. You can go back and forth and think to yourself, wait a minute, do we really need kink in a children's movie? Do we really uh, care about whether um, the the fat half fish person leaves their scales behind for love? <laughs> which is the whole plot of the movie. I don't know how you erase that from the... We can worry about that. We can even worry about whether the race of the half-fish, half-human thing is appropriate and whether its relatives should die in a shipwreck with white skin or black skin. We can look through all of that as long as you remember one central fact, that everything involved in this movie and everything else in your life is racist. Everything is racist. Every thought you have is a KKK dream. Everything is racist. White supremacist is the stream. We are screwed. All right. Well, Congress once again allowed itself to be pushed into appeasing the administration and raising the debt ceiling for, yes, the 79th time. Pave the way for continued reckless spending, unlimited spending for years and years to come and further devaluation of our dollar. As our national debt continues to skyrocket, how are you going to protect your savings? Well, I don't know. Let me think about maybe diversifying a portion of your portfolio into gold. You can do that with the help of Birch Gold. And the easiest way to do it is Birch Gold helping you convert an existing IRA or 401k into an IRA with gold. You put a portion of your portfolio there, you're not going to pay a penny out of pocket, and you can hedge against all the insanity in the world. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa are banding together against the dollar right now. More and more central banks are diversifying. Are you? You know what they're buying? They're buying gold. Are you? Follow the lead uh, of some of these other countries because, look, you got to hedge against their crazy uh, behavior and, honestly, our government's crazy behavior as well. Text Stu to the number 989898. You'll get a free info kit on gold. There's no obligation, just information. They've got an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, thousands of happy customers. Birch Gold can help protect your savings as well. Text Stu to the number 989898. Take action today. With Birch Gold, text Stu to the number 989898. It's Birch Gold. Joined once again by Rob Eno, Blaze TV's resident media critic. And Rob, I don't know how you how you fill, fill your days up because I mean, what is there to criticize the media these oh, days? Nothing. They're, yeah. they're fine. Yeah, they're, they're doing great. Great people. <laughs> Do nothing wrong. It's yeah. fantastic. Everything's going really well. Yeah, I, I'm surprised I'm still employed. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Really, it's true. Um, so uh, I want to bring to you the, let's start with CNN here for a minute. They're in a tumultuous time, which they've been in for a very long time. There's a new piece out in the Atlantic, 15,400 words on Chris Licht and his new, 
I, what they call a meltdown at CNN. They're saying this is not working, that everyone's in full out revolt at CNN, especially after this Donald Trump town hall that went over a few weeks ago. You saw the piece. Uh, what, what should we make of this? Good. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because they don't understand that he's doing what he needs to do mm. to make CNN what it used to be, which was a straight news source. You know, they're going to have town halls with Joe Biden. They're going to have town halls probably with their, the left is going to go absolutely nuts when they have one with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Mm. I mean, when that one happens. Right. Oh, my gosh. But they're going to keep doing these things because he, it's he's basically stealing the old Fox line. Right. We report you decide. You know, that, that's what they're trying to do. And I think that for a lot of people where it was, a, it was an activist organization under the last head, you know, and he had his, his minions, Brian Stelter and, mm -hmm. you know, Don Lemon and those guys go out and, and do that left wing stuff all the time. They just don't know how to act. I think, yeah. I think the media is so used to their narrative being quote unquote normal and quote unquote what is real news that if you go a little bit away from it, the the left just goes absolutely nuts. Yeah, it's true, and it's, I mean, I could, it's an interesting thing reading the piece. It, it's you could tell it's hard for him to try to implement this because right. he's there trying to implement a what he describes as a fair to both sides type of approach, when no one at the company who works there, or almost no one who works there, wants to actually provide a both sides approach. They don't like that. They think that's that's bad journalism. The only way to do real journalism is to attack Donald Trump 24 hours a day. If you have these people working there, how do you ex execute the system? I, I think you just have to weed them out. I think you gotta find the ones that don't wanna go forward with the plan and weed them out. It goes to the whole problem with, with journalism today, right? Mm -hmm. Journalism majors think that they're getting into journalism to make a difference, to hold the bad people accountable, to do all those things. No, you're reporters. You're there to report the news as it comes. Yes, you can do so with facts and you can, you know, fact check somebody in a in a in a real way, but not in the, you know, without evidence and all, you know, fact checking opinions as opposed to fact checking facts. You know, they fact check right. opinions. Yeah. And, and I think that, that this is this is what they need. And we knew that this was going to happen. I mean, the guy that that owns a big stake in Discovery is on the board is a big time libertarian conservative. Mm -hmm. So you knew that this was gonna happen when they took it over and they knew it was gonna happen. And you saw, you know, Stelter's boy wonder, Oliver Darcy got his hand slapped a few weeks ago and he's been in line now. You know, so it's, it's going to take some time, I think, to move past this, but I think they're gonna come out at the other end better. Than what they were. I like the optimism here. It, it's, you I, know, I, it's Hawaiian Shirt Friday. It is so Hawaiian Shirt Friday. Yeah, very, very happy. <laughs> That's how the optimism begins, is Hawaiian Shirt Friday. Right. Um, you know, over and over again, they go back to this one quote that I guess he, uh, Chris Licht says all the time, which is, we, we're not going to, uh, we can just debate whether rain, we like rain or you don't like rain, but we can't debate whether it's raining or not. Right. Right. Which is a sensible call to, I guess, a journalistic principle. But one I think is really resisted by the people inside. And, and as I was reading the, the piece, you wonder if it's like trying to overhaul a, a, a basketball team. And, you, you know, you're going to be lo a losing team for a few years. There's going to be a rebuilding process. It's like Philadelphia 76ers, the process. Well, all those guys that talked about the process for the Sixers eventually wound up getting fired right before the team wound up making the uh, Eastern Com Conference finals. It, 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 do you think CNN has the and the new leadership has the the patience and the and the correct motives to allow this to take place and, and maybe improve over time? No, I think they do. I think I think um, I think Warner Discovery or Discovery Warner, whatever I forget exactly what they're called. Yeah. I think that they want this to be a straight news source, and I think that that he has been told that this is what you're going to do. And this doesn't come from him, right? This comes from Zaslav, the yeah, boss. Yeah. You know, th th this direction isn't coming from Chris Licht. Chris Licht is there to institute the boss's, you know, straight line. And I think that they're going to have a lot, you know, th there's going to be a long runway uh, for this to happen. Now, if, you know, the ratings go completely in the toilet, then that's something else, right? right. But, but they weren't that good before. Right, <laughs> exactly. And I think, yeah, yeah, I think so. what you're finding is you're finding a lot of people are leaving them and going to MSNBC because they're yeah. missing hearing exactly what they want to hear, right? But that might be what brings some conservatives back to tuning into CNN for a little bit, right? Yeah. And I think you've seen uh, Jake Tapper has kind of moderated to, mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, like when Jake Tapper was at ABC News, mm -hmm. he was like a straight down the middle, you know, call yeah. balls and strikes kind of guy. And he got into this whole, you know, 
being kind of a, you know, skewing to the left, which he's, his politics are, but being more open about it mm -hmm. than he was at ABC News. And I think that you're seeing him get a little bit back towards that. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, if you go back to the, the Trump or the Obama days, excuse me, Jake Tapper is the only person who ever asked uh, President Obama a tough question outside of Fox News. Like, right. I mean, he was really the only guy there for a long time. And he, I mean, he, I think he you know, despises Donald Trump. Outside of that, he does some good reporting, um, and maybe there's going to be more of that. I, I do wonder if you know if you can do if you can execute this type of transition with people like Christian Amanpour employed, right? Like you have a person who's like that, who's like an elder states person, who's going to come out and outwardly criticize you, uh, going to undercut you. You know she's leaking to reporters allegedly, and all these other things constantly. So I mean, I, you can't do it with you know. You mentioned some of the other people that have, that have left Stelter and Lemon, and they've, they've made that determination already, but. It seems like there's still a lot of house cleaning that needs to be done. I think there is, and I think you'll see it, right? If they can, if they can prove that she's doing the leaking, she'll probably be gone. I mean, I don't think that he has any sacred cows, right? I think the only person that would have been a sacred cow, but he got let go a long time ago, would have been somebody like Larry King, right? I think that would be the only person that would be a sacred cow in this thing. And he's shown that he will get rid of big-name talent in a heartbeat. He moved Don Lemon to the morning because he thought Don Lemon would do well in the morning, and Don Lemon turned out to be a complete <laughs> basket case, yes. misogynistic, you know, <laughs> out of your mind. Yeah. I don't know how you missed well that with one, others, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah. So, you know, maybe he knew, and maybe he, was, he didn't want to let him go, but he knew that if putting him there was going to make him go crazy, then he could get rid of him, right? That, that could be true, too. Mm -hmm. Um, um, last one on CNN. Uh, Chris Licht, uh, I, I've heard from inside sources that, and the, and the article sort of points to this, too, that maybe he is moderate to conservative leaning. Maybe he is, a, a, maybe a, would you want to call it a New York Republican? Not someone who maybe would, you know. A Jeb. Maybe, yeah. yeah. And, and that would be okay, honestly, for CNN. I'd be thrilled with that approach if that's actually real. Do you think that's who he is? Do you know anything behind the scenes? I don't know enough about him to mm -hmm. know if he is or not. But I mean, I think that that would be a smart play, right, is to have somebody like that. And, and I don't think he wants to stop debate on on you know, the shows where debate happens, the Jake right. Tapper roundtables, those sorts of things. I think, and they have gotten away from that as much as they were, right? Like every, every minute of CNN used to be, you know, a bunch of liberal guests on just mm -hmm. destroying conservatives. Yeah. And it's not like that anymore. I mean, there's some of it, it mm -hmm. comes through. Um, but I think they're trying to have both sides. And we'll, it, like I said, I mean, you might see somebody like Kennedy, not Kennedy, um, S.E. Cup get a little bit more elevated. Mm -hmm. Um, you might see some of those people get more in the mix now. We'll see. I don't, I, but I don't have an idea of where he is. I'll go look up some more and then come back and talk to you about it later. But I, I'm not exactly sure mm -hmm. where he falls politically. But it, it would make some sense. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, let me switch gears to uh, the primary. Uh, we've got the primary. See, I, I, I am of the belief that primary season is the dumbest season. People just say really dumb things. They're constantly attacking people they agree with 95% of the time. Some of that's understandable, right? you got to have some differentiating uh, way to differentiate yourself from the other candidates or why vote for you. But, man, I mean, it's insufferable. i got to say, like, these, these guys going back and forth at each other with just kind of nonsensical attacks. Andrew Cuomo was better than Ron DeSantis. I and mean, some of this stuff is just completely ridiculous. Yeah, it's absolutely nuts. But we know that that's who Trump is, right? That's what he did in yeah. 2016. Um, before our merger between Conservative Review and CRTV and, and The Blaze, I was on the Conservative Review side. And my project, the thing that I did um, was the, the presidential profiles that we did at Conservative Review back sure. in 2016. Big, long, in-depth you know, this is what the candidates did this week. This is how they fall on issues. And so I, I followed that race more than I'm following this race, mm -hmm. just religiously. And that's what Trump did, right? Like little Marco, like that, that, yeah. that is who Trump is. And his fans absolutely love it. Now, his ability to, to turn Ron DeSantis into some left-leaning crazy rhino that he's trying to do, I think is going to fall flat on its face. But, but some of his, I mean, he's got supporters that are just, like down the line, he yeah. can never do any wrong, which is a little bit crazy, right? Like I wasn't, I, I was kind of, I wasn't a never Trumper, but I didn't vote for him in 2016, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I gave him the benefit of the doubt in 2017 and, and he surprised me. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of, you know, DeSantis did things that Trump said he was going to do. But to say that, that Ron DeSantis was Andrew Cuomo, who was putting, you know, COVID patients into nursing homes to kill 
old people, you know, is <laughs> kind of crazy. I just can't. I mean, maybe it's just my hatred of Andrew Cuomo that comes through on that point. And I don't think point, Ron but... DeSantis has nipple rings. So there's no? that too. Okay, no. Okay, that's good. That's important. I mean, we don't to... know, but I'm guessing he does. I don't think any president should have nipple rings. That should be right. disqualifying. Is that in the Constitution? If not, it should, it should be. be. Uh, that's just important. So um, how do you think this plays out? Because, you know, watching this, I mean, to me, Trump is the overwhelming favorite here it's his to lose if he runs his if if trump is his best trump you know say the last month of the 2016 uh, general election where he is on his game and he's very disciplined i don't think anyone would have a chance to knock him off here but of course he's not that guy all the time and yeah. that is the only thing that really puts him at risk here do you think he can hold off DeSantis and all these other people what do you think happens? i, I don't know i think it's going to be interesting i think i think the stuff that's happening in georgia and other places the more and more he gets indicted or things come out, I think it's going to become tougher for him. And I think people are going to, I think primary voters are going to make a decision. Mm -hmm. You know, do we want to go with this guy or do we want to go with someone who fights just as well that does some other stuff, right? right you know, right. That, that's, I think, going to be the calculus. And we got a long time left, right? We, it's, it's the beginning of June. We've got seven months probably Seven, seven and a half God, months. I can't. Yeah, seven and a half months of this, baby. At least, right? I mean, yeah. it, you get six more months this year. We're going to have a few debates. And then they, the, the first, when is Iowa? February? So, I was uh, like, like some, it January, all depends. February? They move it around. Like yeah. if somebody tries to get in front. Yeah, I don't remember. So it usually starts out one. like the first month of February. And I, I remember back in, back in 20, 2008, mm -hmm. the, the McCain thing, everybody tried to jump in front of um in front of New Hampshire, and like the New Hampshire primary was like January fifth, right. right? Because everybody tried to jump in front, and like New Hampshire's just like, like you know, who knows? Might, maybe we don't have seven months. Maybe yeah, it'll be it, October tenth. Maybe it will change. And who knows? Uh, yeah. It'll be it'll be an interesting to one to one to watch. I just wish that. Look, I understand people are going to fling mud at each other. It would just be nice if there was something that was at least based on humanity and, and like actual policy. You, you see the situation where almost every attack from these people are like. Attacks on things that don't make any sense. Attacks that sound like left-wing attacks. You know, this guy's got to cut Social Security. He wants the fair tax, the 23. Like, these are attacks that are that were standard issue attacks for the left for years and years and years and years. And now Republicans are using them on each other. Right. And I think it's kind of the, the, the populist shift in yeah. the Republican Party. I think that some of those work, right? I think that, yeah. that Trump was a, you know, I, I don't think this is, you know, our... Tea Party party anymore? Our twenty ten, really you know, really it's isn't. not. It, it's it's a little bit, you know, different. You got you know people like Thomas Massey voting for <laughs> that 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 I one is Thomas just Massey, like yeah. shocking to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, you so you've got some weird things going on. Um, but I, you know, this is this is primaries. This is what twenty sixteen so was. Mm -hmm. We got the, the party got out of it in a good spot and won the presidency. Um, I'm I'm just really concerned if if. Somehow Joe Biden is not the nominee. It's going to be a lot tougher in 2024 than if he is, no matter who our nominee is. All right, let me give you this. Joe Biden, for whatever reason, decides not to run. Kamala Harris completely falls apart. OK, let's, um, these are all hypotheticals here. It's not one of those two. Who is it? I really think it might be uh, Robert F. Kennedy. I, I think really? that he's pulling at 30 percent right now. I, it's incredible. He's pulling at 30 percent. I, I think that people in both parties are sick of establishment politics. Mm. So you don't I think, think that they're being told, I think they're sick of being told things. I mean, do you remember the SNL skit with, um, with Tom Hanks where they did Black, Black Jeopardy? Yeah and, yeah. and Tom Hanks, you know, was like, they, they asked about the election, he's like, oh, it doesn't matter, they got that decided anyways. Yeah. Right? Like, 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 and then like the, you know, Leslie, Leslie and, and, um, the, the good burger guy come over and start shaking his hands like, yeah, you got it, right? <laughs> yeah. There is a lot of agreement between Trump voters mm. in your rank and file. I mean, remember, it was Democrats yeah. that said that the voting machines were rigged. Yeah, they, like, I mean, 2004, this is, you know, yeah. 2016. Yeah. I, we, we saw they that magically got better in 2020. They but, did. Very yeah. healthy voting yeah. machines. It's just... I just wish some of this stuff mattered. I mean, the RFK Jr. thing is such a great example of it because uh, he, he's saying, hey, hey, like we shouldn't go to war in Ukraine. Well, that it was a standard issue part of the Democratic platform yeah. for a zillion years not to go to war. All of a sudden you have to want the war or you can't be a Democrat. Right. H how am I a loony lefty from 2002? <laughs> no. I don't, I don't like, 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 like it's just this weird, like yeah. upside down thing, you know. 
<laughs> it's, you know, people, people are sick and tired of Lindsey Graham going over to the Ukraine and saying, hey, we spent some money and killed some Russians. That's great money spent to me. Yeah, right. I mean, it's just like, yeah. that's not where the American people are. Yeah, very true. Robbie Noah, resident media critic over here at Blaze TV. Make sure to subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash Stu. The promo code is Stu. Rob, thanks so much for coming on the program. Thanks for having me on. You know, buying or selling a home is really stressful. It can be really damaging to your financial future if you screw it up. And of course, you know, like it's like your taxes. You don't know what you're doing with your taxes. No one does. I don't know what I'm doing with the real estate paperwork. I don't know how to micromanage a real, you know, what's going on in a real estate market locally. It's, it's difficult to tell. You might be able to tell general trends, but... You know, it's, there's a lot more detail to it than that. You need the best real estate agent you can find. And that's why you go to realestateagentsitrust.com. They work with only the best agents in every market and they do their homework. They talk to every agent before inviting them to join the network. And of course, they work with only full-time professionals, uh, no part-time or inexperienced agents. The team makes the introduction and then follows you through the buying or selling process to make sure you're satisfied. The agents involved have long track records and they're the best in their field. So join them. Go to realestateagentsitrust.com, realestateagentsitrust.com. Get hooked up with them. They'll give you the introduction to the preferred agent in your town. It's realestateagentsitrust.com. Ah, yes, it's the weekend. And maybe you're going to go out and see a show or something this weekend, something fun. I don't know why you need, though, to go see a show when all of this theater comes to you directly from Washington every single week. This week was the Debt Ceiling Theater. What an incredible show. I can't wait for the sequel. In what, 18 months or so? It's going to be really, really exciting. Uh, you get the, uh, the big fake scare of we're going to default and everyone acts like everything's terrible. And then they say they're going to pass some spending cuts and nothing really comes of it. And everyone comes on and says, oh, this is really good or this is really bad. We got to do it. And then it gets pushed through. Now, I told you all this yesterday and 20 times before this that I thought this is the way this is going to turn up. You'd have Republicans claiming a slight victory. Oh, we got some things. We did better than, you know, if we just passed a clean uh, debt ceiling. De Democrats are saying they got stuff they like in this bill. And in the end of the day, it was going to get through without uh, much of uh, much stress, honestly. Now, What's, what I guess I didn't necessarily see coming was I saw, thought there would be pushback yesterday in the Senate. And there was from people like Mike Lee and Rand Paul and Ted Cruz who said, this is crazy. We're not getting any spending cuts here at all. This is bad. We're not going to default. Let's take this seriously and actually try to get some meaningful uh, reforms. That did exist, but it was not the top complaint from Republicans. And you'd say, well, OK, we have a situation where the spending is out of control. Republicans try to you know, stop the spending. What would Republicans complaint be over this? You'd think it would be the Mike Lee complaint, right? We didn't cut spending enough. No, no. The Republicans complaint yesterday is that we cut spending too much. That was what we got from the Republicans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People like Lindsey Graham, uh, Roger Wicker, who, by the way, uh, is available to primary if you happen to be in uh, what is it, Mississippi. Uh, uh, just I mean, it would be nice if somebody would step up and primary some of these candidates with terrible voting records on the Republican side in bright red states that any Republican will win. But that's a totally different story for a totally different show. What I'm saying here is that it was pathetic theater. And once again, you get a bunch of amendments that so that voters can go back and say, oh, well, I tried. I put that up there. And of course, they were all voted down. This goes through and now it goes to the president. And at the end of the day, much ado about nothing. Uh, as, as expected, as predicted, as you knew was going to happen, you got the results you expected. Once again, the debt limit raised for, what is it, the 79th time. Some people say that maybe our supply lines aren't so uh, carefully constructed these days. Maybe we're depending a little bit too much on places like India and China to get our, I don't know, medication here. Uh, that is a real problem. And we're seeing, I don't know if you've noticed this lately, I certainly have. You know, I have kids, I got a wife, I got myself. And sometimes we need medicine. And more frequently than ever before, we're going to the pharmacy and that medicine isn't there. We have to wait for a week. We have to go to three or four pharmacies to find it. What's going on? 
Well, the Jace case from Jace Medical is a great step to take to prepare yourself from the worst. This is a pack of five different courses of antibiotics that you can use to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, things like respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, and a lot more. It's a great way to be ready for shortages that seem to be coming more and more often, and it's perfect for traveling, especially if you're in one of these, like, you know, centralized government systems and you don't want to have to deal with the doctors there. Don't get caught unprepared. Uh, unprepared. Go to jacemedical.com and enter the code STU at checkout. Promo code is STU at J-A-S-E medical.com. It's the Jace case from Jace Medical. They got great stuff. Check out uh, their way to, you can even supply yourself for a year of medication uh, through Jace Medical as well. Check it out now, the Jace case from Jace Medical. Well, you got a long weekend ahead of you, uh, and uh, I hope you have uh, cleared out some time because there's 10,000 photos from Hunter Biden's laptop that have hit the web. Truth and transparency is what they're promising. BidenLaptopMedia.com is the place to go. This is put together by a former Trump aide. The quotes are, <laughs> are fantastic. It's taken us a couple of months to go one, th one by one through the photos, about 10,000 of them, and redact the genitalia on the photos. <laughs> No word of if he's hooking up with fish in any of these uh, particular photos. But yes, I'm sorry to report all the genitals are gone, uh, reportedly. Uh, they say, um, by the way, it's not every photo that was on the laptop. There are, for example, screenshots of Candy Crush games where we are fairly confident in saying there's absolutely no news value to those. So it's going to be, I would say, 98% of the photos on the device, around 10,000 in total, though it could be slightly less than that. It's going to be a completely authentic recounting of the photos on the device. So look, I mean, at least you'll get the 10,000 uh, uh, junk photos of Hunter Biden. My, my producer's only through 4,000 so far, so a little disappointing. Uh, we'll have to work on that over the weekend. Uh, but there you go. Uh, we've got that going on. And from uh, Hunter Biden's Taquito over to the Enchirito from Taco Bell. Taco Bell is bringing back the Enchirito. <laughs> That's a hell of a segue. Uh, the Enchirito won the contest as to what they were going to bring back. It was either the Double Decker Taco or the Enchirito. Enchirito won with 62% of the vote. What is the Enchirito? A soft flour tortilla loaded with seasoned beef, beans, and diced onions, all rolled up and covered with red sauce, topped with melted shredded cheddar cheese. So it's basically the same as every other item on their menu, but I absolutely love every other item on their menu, so I'm completely excited about this. You can only get it through the app, though. The Enchirito from Taco Bell. Do me a favor, go to blazetv.com slash stew and uh, subscribe to Blaze TV. Use the promo code stew while you're there. Save yourself 10 bucks. If you're on YouTube, drop a comment below. We'd love to see them. Subscribe to the channel as well and rate and review the podcast. Five stars is the appropriate number of stars. Some comments from yesterday's show. Since stew was forcibly transitioned to, from Steve to stew by Glenn, this is true, some would say he's uniquely qualified to discuss the trans issue. <laughs> I never really thought of that issue, uh, that, that idea, but I think that's true. I'm, I'm, I'm on board. Uh, Dan uh, discusses our uh, trying to figure out all different months for each deadly sin on yesterday's program. Amen to August being sloth month. Arizona is absolutely miserable. Five stars stew. And uh, David uh, points out we try to combine pride and lust into the same month of June. Thanks a lot, Stu. I, I just happened to be drinking a beverage when you announced that June would now be known as Thrust Month. <laughs> it's lust. And then the pride. Put it together. We get Thrust Month. That's all. Uh, yes, the beverage ended up spraying out of my nose all over the table. And yes, fluids from my body are spraying at the outset of Thrust Month, which is really an unfortunate way <laughs> of framing it's not the visual you necessarily needed to end the particular show this weekend. But don't worry, we're going to be back on Monday. Next week, by the way, Pat and Stu on the radio show. I, uh, a lot of you enjoy that, so it'll be a fun week uh, next week for most of the week. Don't miss that. We're going to have Jesse Kelly next week, Dave Rubin next week, a great lineup of shows. And head to uh, StuDoesMerch.com. The code is STU10. You'll save 10% off. Uh, we will see you on Monday. <laughs>